Hello guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs, welcome back to another video of ours, delighted to welcome as usual, well not as usual, as usual for the first division show I must, must say is Gavin Woods and Keith Ryan, what's the story guys? How are you? Four things. Not too bad, yeah. I suppose this is a different type of video today lads, this is the Republic of Ireland obviously are playing Saturday in Hamden Park in Scotland at 740 Five and uh, I suppose it feels like a long time since Ireland's really played a match because it has been a long time. Ukraine was the last game, that brilliant Nathan Collins goal, of course, in the Nations League. And um, that was a couple of days after Ireland destroyed uh, Scotland at the Aviva 3-0, in which I was at that game and uh, really enjoyed that game, to say the least. They played lovely football and um, it looked like things were coming along nicely as such. And that continued on, as I said there, mentioned against Ukraine. Um, Scotland now next, I suppose, Keith, first up to you. Uh, it's unlikely Ireland are going to qualify, you would think. Um, but the time this video comes out, by the way, Scotland and Ukraine will probably be finished, to be honest with you. But I don't see Ireland getting through, to be honest, Keith. But it's, a mix, it's been a mixed campaign, hasn't it? Uh, first two results, not very good, or performances. The Armenia one in particular, followed by Ukraine. And then those two performances I've mentioned. Uh, where are you seeing Ireland, I suppose, at the moment is the main question for now. Yeah, I think I think we're on the up to be honest. Which is, look, the, the Armenia results like you need to be beating the bottom seeds in the group, and obviously Ireland didn't do that. And if Ireland had done that, that to be in the right in the mix for qualification, you know, Group A or, or uh, League A. Um, the last two results are positive, you know. Uh, to go to to Poland, I know obviously Ukraine are playing away from home as such, but to go to go there and to get a result. Fantastic goal from Nathan Collins. Um, who's come into his own. He's obviously got the move to, to Wolves as well, so which is fantastic. Um, and then to follow that up with a pretty convincing 3 0 win against Scotland. I, I, I mean, uh, one player I picked out for Scotland at that time, Scott McCombney, was absolutely atrocious. And uh, for 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 a player that's playing at the highest level, and uh, for Manchester United, he looked he looked. Um, Quality wise, you know, he would he would have been out of place in the League of Ireland, you know, and that's that's not uh, that's not doing any disservice to players in the League of Ireland, but he looked really poor given that he plays for Man United and he's obviously seen as but like uh, I know people are battering Kenny and stuff like that, but uh, two good results and we go into this game um in a positive in a positive mindset. Yeah, well I think Gavin, the interesting point is I suppose that Scotland would have a game against the Ukraine before they play Ireland a couple of days before. Do you see that as an advantage or disadvantage to Ireland? Oh, it's definitely an advantage to Ireland, Keith. And I suppose, look, they'll have, a, they'll have the extra couple of days training together, you know, and obviously, as you said, I mean, when 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 was the last game? Was it before the summer, was it? Was it was the last game before the summer? It was June, was it? Was it? Of June, yeah. wasn't it? I was thinking June, yeah. So, like, you know, it's just about getting them back together and team bonding again and, you know, getting the lads together. So, obviously, Scotland and Ukraine, they're playing tonight and then they've only a couple of days and they're back at it again against Ireland, Scotland. Like, so, So I suppose Ireland have that extra couple of days to get on the training ground and, and you know, keep doing what they're doing because, you know, to be fair to Stephen Kenny, gets a lot of slack and, um, you know, I, 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 think, um, I think things are going in the right direction and it is going to take a bit of time. But um, yeah, things are things are looking up from anywhere, which is great. Yeah, Keith. I suppose in terms of the squad, uh, the likes of Matt Doherty returns, the Seamus Coleman returns, etc. But um, you know, Shane Duffy is there as well. They're the more experienced uh, defenders, you could say, in the squad. But I suppose an issue for those players is the fact that between them all, they've played three games or something this season. Coleman hasn't started a Premier League game for Everton, and and Everton have been poor at the same time. You know what I mean? Um, Doherty has only made two sub appearances for Spurs this season, you know. And of course, he's been coming back from a major injury, and he's finding it difficult maybe to get back into the into the Tottenham side. And and Duffy's the same, only two, maybe more warningly for him, maybe two sub appearances for Fulham. So, um, you know, you're looking at that, and you're kind of thinking to yourself, do you bring Coleman and Doherty in? And then you look at that, and what are your thoughts there? Um. I think all three of them have been unlucky, uh, obviously with injuries and stuff like that, and they just haven't managed to get uh, to get game time this season. If you look, I I picked I picked a back five. Uh, I think it's Dardy against Coleman for the right hand side spot, um, and I think Dardy Coleman has been brilliant for. Her, and let's be honest, he's been brilliant. 
But unfortunately, I think he's 33 now, so he's getting on in age. And, you know, Doherty had a good end to the season last season with Tottenham. Um, so I probably squeezed Doherty ahead of Coleman. Uh, at wing Duffy, back, is it? At wing back, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. Shane Duffy is a fantastic servant for Ireland. I love Shane Duffy, I really do. I think he's a warrior. He's done no wrong for Ireland. Um, the two goals in the qualifiers a few years ago against Denmark. But unfortunately, he hasn't got game time this season. So you're looking at probably Nathan Collins, John Egan, who was captain Sheffield United to the top of the championship, and Daryl Shea. All three of them have played, um, I think, the, the majority of minutes available to them this season. If Omar Delhi was fit, he'd probably fit in instead of O'Shea, maybe, you know. We seem to be rich in numbers at the back at the moment. It's crazy. It, same with goalkeepers. Bazuna is probably going to start goal given his uh, form for, for Southampton. And Travers has obviously dropped lately. But yeah, look, Duffy has done no wrong for Ireland. Um, Coleman's done no wrong for Ireland. But unfortunately, the game time matters. And I know Darty hasn't played much this season, but I think he just fits in mm. given his age profile. And uh, he may be that mm, little bit fitter than, than Coleman is. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, the funny thing is, Gavin, the last time Ireland played Scotland when they won 3 0 at the Aviva, I'm just thinking to myself, what way will Kenny play this? We know he's going to play three at the back with the two wing backs. He's going to play that system. We know that. But the centre backs that day were Duffy, Collins, and Egan. The question is, do you think he'll go the same again? Or as you say, as Keith said there, will he put Darrow Shea possibly in for Duffy? Because actually, I thought Duffy. Struggled a little bit in that game, believe it or not, despite Ireland winning 3 0 in terms of bringing the ball out on that. Collins at the moment looks like a bit of a mainstay. Uh, Egan, as Keith said, you know, he has Sheffield United, he's captain Sheffield United to the top of the championship as well. But is that the only debate of Shea for Duffy, do you think? Yeah, I, I agree in everything that Keith said there, to be fair. I mean, if you look at Duffy, as Keith said, he's been a great servant, Ireland, but. When you're not getting game time, Keith, especially at this yeah. level, like you're, you're, you know, let's call a spade a spade here. Like you, you shouldn't be starting the game really. And I mean, to be fair to Duffy, you know, Miles Celtic came back to Brighton and looked like it was promising again. Then you know things didn't go as well. Then he went to Fulham and coming on two subs. You you can't you can't justify starting a player like that. And and like I know it's it's a tough one in terms of with like Coleman and Doherty in that sense. But as you say, like. Coleman hasn't played the season, whereas Doherty obviously is only getting back from his injury. I think the difference with Doherty is that to get up to the level of uh, fitness that uh, Antonio Conte would expect of him, I think his level of fitness will be excellent anyway. And I think he, he's he's basically ready to start, for one for a better word. I just think he's been unlucky with Spurs because Spurs have been doing well and stuff. So I would definitely go with Doherty and um, like Nathan Collins to be fair I think Nathan Collins is going to be a superb player um, I, I I think he's going to be right at the top it, it's just you know he it was a fantastic move to go to Wolves just you know prove himself at the Wolves level for want of a better word mid-table premiership but uh, uh, he's a superb player and he, he's definitely going to be one to watch I suppose the argument is Keith um, Alan Brown played right wing back when Ireland beat Scotland 3-0 there's an argument to say that Brown could be picked as well isn't there Look, and he played well. Yeah, he did, back. actually. Yeah. Um, I think we're forgetting the left-hand side as well. Obviously, yeah, we'll get... Robbie yeah. Brady's come back in as well. Yeah. So, But yeah, no, Darty. Sorry, we'll get on to that. Darty, um, Darty's the man for me, I think. Uh, I think he's more agile and he, you know, he offers more going forward than Dan Brown would. Um, I think I, I think Brown's playing a position on the right side of, of, yeah. of the... You know, he's a, he's a midfielder. He's a holding midfielder, so... Um, yeah, I definitely played Doherty and uh, um, as I said, we discussed the left side in a second. Yeah, as you were mentioned there, the left side, obviously McLean has been actually playing very well for Wigan in the Championship this season. Every time, Gavin, you think McLean is gone, he's finished, it's over, his Irish career is gone, he seems to find something from somewhere. And I know some people, he can be a bit marmite, I suppose, but <clears throat> it's hard to argue with his performances for Ireland in the last number of games. And he did play that game as well against Scotland. It's difficult to make an argument against McLean at this minute in time, isn't it? I know Robbie Brady's back, but he's literally only back from being out of the squad through injury, really, for the first time in years, essentially. Yeah, it's a buzz kid, and I'm one of these marmite people. I'm not a big fan of him. I'm not a big, a big fan of his public outburst, but look, from a fo- 
from a from the from the Irish point of view. To be fair to him, like I I suppose over time, as you said, like he's gone to the he's gone to different teams and he's signed for different teams. And to be fair, Wiggins seems to suit him down to the ground and. He's not a left-sided player anymore. Like he's better in uh, probably, as you say, a left wing back. Where he's he's not going to do he's going to do the job for want of a better word. But he does it right there. Um, but you know, to be fair to him, and, and with Brady only back, and Brady obviously would be much better technically than than James McLean. Yeah. But you know, you 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 can't you can't knock James McLean for his last couple of performances. He he's done really well there. So. I suppose that he is going to start with him anyway, and especially that, as you said, that he's got all the game time with Wigan, so uh, he has to be a starter, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Keith, the midfield, then you have, um, obviously... I think not... he, uh, just Ryan Manning was a surprise um, player that wasn't called up as well. He's, he's having a good season with, with Swansea, so, I mean, you mm. know, in the season seems to be out in the cold a little bit. I'm not sure if he's injured or not, is he? But... Um, yeah, I thought Ryan Manning would have would have fit in well there, you know. And uh, he doesn't seem to though, even when he's in the squad, he doesn't seem to fancy him though, does he? Manning. No, no, it's it's, it's a weird one. Like, mm. but he's gone with the Trident and trusted uh, McLean again, another player that hasn't let Ireland down. Gavin Wright, and uh, with Brady coming back in, I, I don't see Brady. It's like Alan Brown. I don't see Brady as a left back. You know, I see him as a, a more of a more of a forward player, you know, but. Um, yeah, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see where he starts. So, sorry to interrupt you. I suppose the midfield there, though, you have Cullen, and who's obviously signed for Burnley this season, doing quite well. And look, Cullen has played well for Ireland. I generally look at how they play for Ireland, to be honest with you, more so than their club. Uh, obviously, if they're in the cold at their club, it, it is difficult. But Cullen is obviously playing championship. A few people question that move, Keith. Um, but at the same time, I think. You know, and they're like, okay, a couple of years playing maybe European football and that, I get that. But I still think playing for Burnley kind of puts you more in the shop window and obviously gives you a better option to get into the Premier League potentially as well, doesn't it? And look, he's been a stalwart really, hasn't he, under Kenny? And he's been he's been brilliant. Yeah, I, lo- I really like Josh. I think he's a fine player. Um, and he seems to have steadied the ship for Ireland. You know, he gets on the ball and he sprays passes across the pitch and stuff and there. Uh, he he he's good at he's good at stopping attacks and stuff like that, you know. He's he buzzes around the place, you know. Mm. The only thing is who joins him in the midfield. Um obviously we have Jason Malumbi who has the energy. But Jeff Hendrick seems to have revitalized himself this season with Reading. Mm. So, you know, and again we talk about players that haven't already down. Jeff gets a bad bit of a bad rep uh, from Ireland fans. I think Glenn Whelan was the same for years. People who were like, Oh, Glenn Whelan, this, that, and the other. He served Ireland so well, and so is Jeff Hendrick. You know, a lot of people say he's living off 2016 uh, at the Euros, but you know, I, I, isn't think, he I think a little bit, he is a bit though, isn't he? He had a good campaign, he had a good qualifying campaign that year and a, and a good, uh, good tournament, but yeah. you know, I mean, obviously, obviously, uh, Kenny sees something in him, you know, it's a bit like going back to McTominay as well. Mm. Like, obviously, someone sees something in him, so I mean. I go with the energy with Malumbi, um, even though I've talked up Jeff Hendrick, but uh, I think Malumbi and Cullen moving forward for the next campaign would probably be the sitting, the two sitting midfielders. Yeah, Gavin, I think I agree with that. I think I go Malumbi personally because um, he played the last couple of games as well with Cullen. Actually played re- really well. He's playing well with West Brom as well. And I just think he's kind of got a little bit of everything. You know what I mean? He's uh, He mightn't stand out, but he's got a little bit of everything, whereas... Hendrick might stand out a bit more, but he also might make more basic mistakes, let's say, in games. And uh, it's hard to see him straying away for the Scotland game from the two that played against Scotland the last time, I think, is it? Yeah, you have to stick with the two lads, Keith. Uh, you know, as you say, I suppose Hendrick is... I suppose it's kind of similar to the Seamus Coleman situation, you know, you know, when he's played, he's done his best. And sometimes, you know... Hendrick isn't technically great, but I think he's at that kind of the, the end of his career, for want of a better word, internationally. Whereas I suppose Colin and Malumbi are younger, and I suppose Kenny will look at it from a point of view that, you know, they are the lads that are going to take Ireland forward in their midfield. So I expect that he will have uh, Colin and Malumbi as his two central midfielders. And to be fair, 
I never really saw the two lads play up to the recent couple of games, but the two of them have really impressed me. So, you know what, you have to give credit where soon. I think they deserve to start on, on, on Saturday. Yeah, Keith, I think the front three is going to be the most interesting one because they'll keep coming back to the Scotland game because they're playing Scotland as well. And obviously they played them recently. But the three they went with was Knight, Parrot, and um, and Obafemi. But when I say the three, it was a bit weird. Like it was more like Parrot off Obafemi. But you know what I mean? Jason Knight is a strange one, I think, because he's a player I'm a huge fan of. Attitude uh, seems to be able to play a number of different roles. Like if you want him to press, if you want him to play in the left, the right, the middle. Um, but I was very surprised he stayed at Derby and a little bit disappointed that he's in League One. Like, you know, and Derby have actually played him an awful lot at right back this season, which uh, has got a bit of criticism actually uh, from Derby supporters. And even Kenny, to a degree, kind of said, Look, don't see him as a right back at all. But uh, you're looking at him, and by the way, Kenny was talking today, I think he'll play. But the two up front is a funny one because uh, I think in particular Paris has been excellent for Ireland recently, but he's gone to Preston, hasn't scored in 10 games. Now Preston have been poor themselves. They've got three goals all season. You know what I mean? So I don't really know, you know, what the issue is there, but um, he, I know he played well in some of the games, but he's not scoring goals. Obafemi, I think is something like one goal in six or something like that for Swansea. And then you've got the likes of Scott Hogan, who scored a hat-trick recently for Burnley and uh, Robinson. And, of course, the guy at uh, the lad at Rotherham that I'm forgetting, Ogbeni, well, not forgetting, but uh, he was scoring goals and playing. He's playing centrally, actually. He's kind of playing as a number 10, would you believe, at Rotherham as well. But like, not, I don't know. Will he go with the same tree that played against Scotland the last time, do you think? I actually feel, I feel a bit sorry for Jason. I, I didn't get the move. Um, yeah. It's a bit like, let's, let's say it's a bit like Celtic in the Champions League. Celtic play... 11 teams in the Scottish Premier League and they whip them every week and they come up to uh, the European game and they're hammered. So you're playing against League One opposition. Um, you know, it's it's obviously easier than playing in, in the Championship or in the Premier League. And then you come up to the international stage, which is a step above. And, you know, you expect to be, you know, a handier run out. But... Mm. If I was Kenny, I'd drop, I'd drop Knight just, just on that, that he's playing against less uh, less high-profile players at the minute. I I would pick Ogbené. I'd go with Ogbené and Abifemi up, up top and Parrot just off him um, because Parrot has that has that vision. He has that thing about him that he, he sees a pass, you know. Um, and Ogbené obviously has five goals. He, the only issue is poor Abifemi, like, I mean, fantastic for Swansea last season uh, but this season he seems to have fallen out of favour uh, there seems to be something going on in, in, in the background or whatever has happened that's but an issue with him though generally Keith there, nearly every club there seems to be this issue doesn't there yeah and obviously Kenny had a bit of a, a bit of a barney with him didn't he at, at one stage yeah. but on his performance against Scotland he has to start the game if you if we go back to what you were saying about how to perform for Ireland he has to start the game mm. that's probably Counteractive to or that's probably well, Jason Noy hasn't let Ireland down, so he probably should start given his performances for Ireland as well. But um, I definitely bring out Benny back in. I'm unfortunately Jason Noy's the one to miss out. Yeah, Gavin, this is a difficult one, I think, isn't it? The front three, for want of a better word, because it mightn't be a front three as such, but it might be mm-hmm. parted in behind whoever. Um, as I said, the three that played against Scotland the last time effectively, by the way, very effectively, was Alba Fenny Parrot and um. And uh, night, nice. but you could argue in that game in particular that Parrish and Albafeni linked up brilliantly and seemed to suit each other. So it's a difficult one. Then you've got like Benny as well, who's been brilliant when he's played for Ireland, and obviously he's been very good for Rotherham this season. So it has to be three of those four, anyway, doesn't it? Yeah, I suppose I'm going to go a bit different. I'm going to go with Parrish, Albany, and Knight. Um I, I think I think he will start night. Um, I think he I will think, as well, personally. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think the difference with night is, I suppose, he like if he's playing the wing back system, the two lad, the two wing backs are going to have to get back. So he wants somebody like night who's full of energy and full of legs and full of enthusiasm, like more more for his work rate than anything, because you know he's he, he if we want to very he's like a little. Terrier, like you know, in that sense, like so, I think he'll start him from a work rate point of view because that might give the license then for for Parrot and Benny then to kind of 
for want of a word, stay up there. Do you know what I mean? And don't come back. Leave Knight do the tracking. So I, I think that's where he'll start Knight in that sense. Um, and, and and as Keith said, I think like that, you'd like to have seen, you know, you'd like to have seen Jason Knight come up at level or, you know, even come up. I, I'd like to see maybe, maybe it's just a case that maybe up to Christmas, see how his season goes or up to the end of the season. Maybe he wanted to stay at Derby, who knows? But I think that give him this year again with Derby and again, it's just proven himself um, and I think he, he, he'll join another club next year. But the only good thing about him, is, as you said there, is, is Curtis Davis. Obviously, he's the manager of Derby and he's playing him at right back and it doesn't suit him. But I suppose from that point of view, he's looking at him from a point of view of his energy, his work rate, his ability to get up and down the line. And I, I think that could be a benefit to Ireland, you know, for the future, for the simple reason that, you know, you could you could play him as a right back if he went back to a four. But sure, look, I think he'll start night anyway, and I I'm going to go with Knight Parrot and Og Benny. Gavin, can I just ask you? Would you play Knight as a right wing back instead of Dirty and Common, and then play Og Benny, Obafemi, and Parrot up top? You could do that too. Keith, that's that's a that's a good one as well. Like I suppose you'd have to you could leave out Doherty then in that sense you know what I mean because the fact that Knight has been playing all the time and Knight has delayed you know he's had got the minutes in and stuff like that um, and then like I suppose from that point of view then Keith is you have Doherty then to bring on which is a great addition to to bring on as a sub when you need legs he's going to have the legs you know so um, like that's that's a fantastic option to, and at the same the other way around Keith if he starts Doherty and doesn't start Knight Knight's a great player to bring on you know, so like one complements the other in that sense, which is which is a, a, a it's a great thing to have have in your locker. You know. Yeah, I think as well. I think the problem with Jason Knight is, and we don't see it much in football today. It's kind of gone against him a little. He's almost too nice. He was he was prized out of a move at the Herbie, really, and he finds himself now in League One. And there was talk he was going to leave when they were near the bottom of the Championship, and he said no, he was going to stay. But I do think he wanted to leave, but the prize him out of a move. Um, which in my opinion was a little bit harsh on him because of what he did when he, he stayed with them in the championship, you know, that kind of way, um, when they were really struggling, dock points and all that as well. And and then he finds himself playing in, in the right back position where he technically doesn't want to be playing, but he'd probably do it for the team. Um, but sometimes that can go against you as well, Keith, can't it, a little bit? Yeah, loyalty loyalty can be killer sometimes, can't it, really? I mean, uh, it... It's it's an interesting one because obviously like he's in he's in the derby team since he's seventeen eighteen like so um he knows the club and you know sometimes it's hard to leave a club that you have you have a bit of a connection with you know like I mean there's League of Ireland players that have stayed with the same club for years and years and years just because they love the club and the club love them and the fans seem to like him as well obviously they're on Curtis Davis back um because he's playing right back but. Look, if he's playing well there for Derby, like you know, why why change him? You know, and I know I know Kenny will be a bit frustrated that he's obviously being being played out of position in comparison to what he plays for 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 Ireland, but um, yeah, it's it's it, you know what I'd almost go with him at right wing back given he's played there. Gavin's right because Darty and Coleman haven't played there this season, and and now he has. Maybe you play him there, and then you have the. The, the option further up the pitch I think Agbeni um, can definitely um, do damage down, down his side if he's, I know Andy Robertson is injured so Kieran Tierney is only coming back from kind of a, a long layoff so he can get mm-hmm. up against Tierney and um, can get him for pace he definitely um, he definitely trouble him yeah absolutely I mean we'll talk about Scotland Go on, Kevin. Put in there, lads. Just like again, talking about nice there as well. I suppose from that point of view as well as if you look at it, you run about um, Obafemi there, and you know, saying recently hasn't got game time. If you look at night situation, as you said, you know, as you were saying, he was probably prized out of a situation went down to League One. What did he do? His attitude was right. He didn't, yeah. you know, sulk, didn't make a deal out of it. Got on with the job. Mm. You know, was playing every week, putting in his performance, and that's a credit then to himself. So, like, if Kenny. If Stephen Kenny is any bit of a managerial brain in him, he looked at it from that point of view that he's putting in his shift every week. You know, he's playing every week and he's giving everything for Derby. And you know, you you have to reward him then in that sense. So I think he deserves. To, you know, from that, that's my opinion. I think he deserves from that to to, to start in that sense. And I suppose look, I'll Benny as well as like Grant Hanley. I'd be guessing will be playing centre half for Scotland. I mean, one of us could go up against Grant Hanley. Was he? 
I think Scotland. he is, yeah. yeah. Scotland are lucky so because he's you know, he, he's not a great like he was great like that, he was great years ago, but he, he's he's not he's not the same player anymore, you know. Yeah, I mean Scotland, Gavin, like they were hammered by Ireland at, at Lansdowne, I keep saying, but at the Aviva, I'm still in that Lansdowne mode. It, it will be forever. Um, yeah. but they were hammered and they'd be looking at yeah, they'd be yeah. looking at this match as a chance for, of revenge and putting up a performance. So uh, you know, Ireland are gonna have to perform here because I know Scotland are missing a couple of players and that as as Keith mentioned there as well. But um there's no doubt in front of their own supporters, like they'll be giving a hundred percent, I'd say. Yeah, so like they'll 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 have the home support in them. But I suppose you're talking about Ireland and you're saying like that you know the possibility they probably won't qualify. But then in that sense the pressure will be on Scotland. There's no pressure on Ireland in that sense. They can go and enjoy the game and express themselves and you know like the the, the great thing I, I have to say well I think this is my my personal opinion, I think that, you know, Stephen Kenny gets a lot of slack and I suppose it's strange for me coming from a Cork City fan on about a previous Dundalk manager, but you know when he got the job, I was delighted and I'm delighted for him as well. And I hope he gets to to stay in the job and you know he get, he gets to nurture the players. And I think he is the right man for the job and give him the time. And I th- I think I think like in the next two or three years, I think the Irish team are going to be a good team with a lot of young fellas coming through and stuff like that. And you know, leave him in there. Like, like I mean, I don't think there's any other manager who's going to come in and make things any better. He needs the time. And I think he's the right man for the job. And 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 from that point of view, I just think like leave him there. And Ireland have nothing to lose. And I think it's it's only positive uh, from that point of view. Absolutely, key to score prediction. Um, I'm pro- I'm kind of thinking four points out of six is probably a decent return mm. over these two games. Ireland needs six out of six to have any chance of of winning or topping the group. You know, like, stranger things have happened in, in football, Keith. Like, you know, Ukraine and Scotland tomorrow, you're mm-hmm. probably hoping for a draw. And then, obviously, Scotland play Ukraine next week as well in the return game. So, um, my head my head says 1-all. My heart says 2-1 to Ireland. Are you saying 1-all? Gavin? I actually, before Keith said I was going to say 2-1 to Ireland, I think they'll do it. Do you? Okay. I'm yeah. going to say 1-all. Why, why can't they do it? Do you know what I mean from that point of view? Yeah. No, fair enough. I'm going to say one all, and that's definitely in my head. So, look, guys, we'll leave it there. Thanks for coming on. Guys at home, let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, what players would you start? What players wouldn't you start? Hit the subscribe button, and thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. Brilliant. Cheers. Cheers.